Okay. Um, so who'd like to go first on the Gantt chart then? We've got Amelia and Katie, haven't we? Yeah, I'm happy to. Thank you. Brilliant. Uh, so I noted down that Gantt charts are essentially sort of a visual representation of a project schedule. So they're like um, bar charts to show a visual of tasks scheduled over time. Um, they're useful in sort of planning projects and sort of outlining the activities that are to be um, executed along a certain timeline. So each activity, for example, might have a start and end date, but you can see, I guess, the programme of activities which uh, forms the project. Um, it can also be helpful in showing how some tasks may link together um, or relate to one another and show any overlap. So where some tasks may be running alongside one another at the same time, which can help sort of as a project manager or team leader to understand sort of workload and resourcing for maybe individual team members to see sort of what's going on at any one time, which can help manage that. Um, and I'd also put that it's good for demonstrating key milestones. So I'll let, I don't want to take yeah, yeah, all of the information, so I'll let Katie um, chip in as well. Um, sorry. sorry, go on, Hannah. No, I was just going to say, have you got anything to add, Katie? Cause it was really um, I think to add um, just basic stuff, really. So obviously it helps to show where certain tasks can't be started until other tasks are finished. Yeah, so um, it's like the dependencies, isn't it? Yeah, and also, which I hadn't really thought about until I just had a read up on it, is um, you can also use it as a way of showing um, the, what's the word, optimistic time frame for a task, um, the sort of optimum and then the pessimistic. So you can show um, in a different colour or whatever, like what's the longest this could take, even though that wouldn't be ideal. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So it's sort of visual. Yeah, it gives you that. It's almost like scenario planning, isn't it, really, through a Gantt chart? Yeah, um, and you can also, it shows, which, I've, again, not, not something I thought about, but you can also, at the end of each bar, show the percentage completion at any one time as well. Yeah, yeah. And then, yeah, it's just a quick, uh, nice sort of overview, isn't it? What's um, What uh, Gantt chart software do, what sort of software do you use at work then to do this? Uh, Microsoft Project uh, is a probably the most common one isn't it I don't think it's the I don't think it's the best Primavera I think it's the best but uh, yeah I think you have to request access to project as well it's not something that's automatically installed on um, our computers I think but I've used Excel before to make sort of simpler ones yeah. um, when I mean simple I mean you know really quite basic um, I think yeah, that's like your more complex that, ones and you need the software really sorry Katie no, I was going to say that's exactly the same for me. I'm like, I've never actually used um, Project or anything like that, but where I've had to produce one, it's just a case of just doing quite a basic one on Excel. Yeah. You, and, you uh, use off Project as well at Balthus. Do you? Okay. Yeah. Yeah, because I wondered if there was like a consistent way that everybody has well, to. Project, project, probably the most commonly used, Hannah, uh, definitely. Yeah. Uh, but you'll say uh, Primavera P6 or whatever is. Probably the best. Not that I've ever used it. I've never, I've never worked for a company who probably could afford it. Well, we're we're meant to be implementing P6 at, um, for our programming at HE um, yeah. a bit, but I, I won't have involvement in that directly. But we're having lots of meetings about it at the moment, and because I can't picture what they're talking about, it's actually quite difficult. Yeah, to how it'll work. P6 is yeah. mandated on major projects by Highways England as the tool that we utilise. Um, so internally um, within AME we utilise MS Project, but we have Primavera P6 on all of our major Highways England contracts and Network Rail because it's the stipulated tool for scheduling. Yeah. Okay. So is it something you're familiar with then, Claire? Do you use it? Um, I've used I, I use MS Project um, all the time. Um, I've seen Primavera. It confuses my brain. We have specific Primavera planners um, because it is um, very difficult to use. I don't, it's difficult for me as an outsider looking at it to use, whereas MS Project's a bit more like an Excel sheet, so you can kind of use it. But I think Primavera is quite specialist. And I think the reason it's used at kind of the Highways England level is because they can extract 
all of the projects and roll them up to see kind of like a master program. Right, yeah. Yeah. Um, so they can see the full portfolio as well as the individual projects. Um, but when I look at it, it's like looking into some kind of wizard like thing. It, it's very jiggery pokery. I don't really understand it other than looking at the Gantt chart. So do people who, who do use it, do they tend to be sort of technical specialists then, the people that can do it? Okay. Yeah. We have a team of about six uh, across the business Primavera specialists okay. that are the only ones because it's a different licensing as well. Um, so they have to have the, the special license and the authority to use it. So, mm. yeah. Okay. Is there anyone here who's um, never had any experience of doing a Gantt chart? Yeah, I've never used it. Haven't you? Any of you? Is it never been a sort of requirement of? No, I don't do any management really. So yeah, yeah. How, how's this module going to be for you? Is it? Um, I managed to talk to people, um, so okay. I'm using quite a lot of hypothetical examples. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah, that's the way forward. And, and and do feel free, you know, on that day that we've got reserved to have one to ones. Yeah. I mean, genuinely, I'm, I'm conscious you yourself and Lee um, aren't in an environment where it might be the easiest. So, you know, I absolutely will we'll make sure you've got everything you need to be able to do this. Lee, have you ever done one? No. But you like a picture, don't you? And they are quite pictorial. So we're going to be all right on this. <laughs> You don't have to use one for it, by the way, uh, like not for this question. You just have to explain the role of it. So don't you know, it, this is just about introducing the tools and how they can be used. OK, um, thank you. for That was a really smashing um, starting point. So critical path analysis. I've got uh, Claire Gibbons and then CF was the other initial. Chloe. Chloe, yes, I'm so yeah. sorry. That's right. <laughs> you know, my brain's a bit fried anyway, but you yeah. Want to like, there, Chloe? Um, yes, OK, then. So um, critical path is similar um, to a Gantt chart, but slightly different in the fact that rather than actually against a timeline, it's more about the actual sequence. And um, so it shows from the start to the end of a project, the key basically activities that are directly um, imp uh, related. So you can't start activity B and still until you've finished activity A. So the, the main objective of the critical path um, is sequencing and you can use it to kind of estimate the minimum time to complete the whole project um, because, yeah, all the tasks are sequential. Um, and then you can also look at other tasks that are indirectly affected. Um, so they can run like in parallel and then you can give yourself like um, extra float time so you know uh, in your, your overall program where you have that additional allowance for delay and that can help with resource planning. Um, so I think I'll stop there and let Claire add any other points. Um, no, um, I pretty much got the same. So um, it's kind of one of the biggest kind of time-based planning tools that you can kind of use. And it's, I think in its kind of nuts and bolts, the, the main emphasis on the um, CPA is the activities and understanding the shortest time to complete but in a logical order um, so you can see whether you want to do a start to start uh, link or a start to finish link and how those uh, interdependencies are going to work between especially within our environment uh, over um, disciplines couldn't think of the word um, and how that's going to fall into place and the kind of different context I was I was thinking around was obviously we use it for delivering projects um, as a as a tool but <clears throat> it's really good for time scheduling and also that resource loading so we can see when our resources are, are over and under work. So in terms of the context where you use a Gantt chart um, and a critical path analysis would you use one or the other because they seem to be overlapping a little bit do you think they are because it sort of says um, yeah, do you, do you feel they are very different or they? Okay. No, I, th I think they're one of the same. So I think That's you create yeah. the GAMP chart, but then you overlay your critical path analysis. Right, so okay. When we, when I use kind of like MS project, we will always have a critical path running through the programme. 
So the, the tasks that have to be done to help you re- uh, meet the end goal, so they have to happen. And then that's the critical path that we need to keep on the shortest time. And then we have other activities around it, but those other activities can move somewhat. Mm-hmm. Um, but that critical path, if that critical path moves, that's when we need to start flagging to our client that we're going to be missing that end date because our critical path has now moved. So in terms of the context, still- sorry, go for it. No, 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 go on. Please, no. <laughs> uh, I was going to say, we sort of use them both at different levels of governance. So we use the, Gan- I mean, it's in project, I don't use the Gantt chart, I hate them. Um, but, you know, detailing all the different activities and linking the key milestones together, which, you know, what needs to be finished before it starts and then we take it a level up and do we use physio it's not quite a critical path analysis but we do have the critical the critical path is the key part of it um just the big milestones and not the individual steps to get to the milestones um following them so we use that at project board level rather than project level you're on mute hannah yeah. It's because I keep interrupting, so I'm like, okay, rather than sticking my hand finger on my mouth, I think I might press mute, it could be more effective. Um, yeah, thank you very much for sort of bringing them together. That's, you know, really good understanding of both. Um, so the next one we got, thank you, was the milestone chart. So this was, oh, this is our project newbies, isn't it? This is Jenny and Lee. Um, do you want me to go first, Jenny? No, I don't mind. Um, yeah, all I've got is the um, well, it's the development of the Gantt chart. Um, so it represents the key milestones on a main activity. So it shows the interrelationship between the milestones. Um, and then I've got that it um, it helps in controlling the project, and it can be used for highly complex projects. That um, consist of a number of activities um, and then it's yeah required or it's helpful in rescheduling um, so if you see all your milestones if you need to reschedule one um, you can easily do that whether that's the case in practice I don't know um, yeah and that's pretty much what I've got um, yeah so how I'm picturing it is it's like a big bar chart and then you've got the milestones on your activity bar chart. That makes sense. Yeah, yeah right. that sounds a good description. Thank you very much, Lee. Have you got anything to add there? Um, just just a little. Um, so, yeah, from the investigations I've done, it's roughly the same as what Jen has just said. Um, I, did, I, I have come across this uh, after reading up about it um, with the recent um, RCC move that I was part of, um, I actually saw one of these up on the on the wall. Um, I didn't realise what it was until I've read this description um, that the project manager was using at the time. And it does come in handy for if you do have any delays so you can actually move um, everything after that along. Yeah, that makes sense. So it's uh, yeah, easily adjusted, isn't it? Is there anything anyone would like to add on that? I'm not on mute, am I? Is that no? Okay. So they all seem to be quite connected, aren't they? Really, those first three. Um, so I mean, that might be a way of addressing it, given that you've got quite a short, a small word count, and we've got three to address. Um, what? Um, okay. In that case, can we move on? Uh, Stephen, you were a, a, a team of one, weren't you, in describing network diagrams? Is that right, or was there anyone else? Just got your initials down on that one. Yeah, I think I think I'm all on my own. Oh, I feel like <laughs> sort of singing a song or something to you, but yeah. Go. <laughs> so, what what have you um, what have you found out about network diagrams then? So, so I do actually remember this from before. Um, I think I have used one, but a long time ago. Uh, and and the way I mean, it's it's a similar way of displaying. The information by the by the sounds of things but but where, where it differs in, in in visually is that it's like a process flow um of activities um some of them like a gantt chart can run concurrently um but what it what it kind of shows 
uh, pictorially and through the use of like um, these these sort of squares with numbers on them is um, like dependence where, where 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 certain activity has dependence on another and 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 when what it's really good at is calculating automatically presumably through software um, sort of float time um, and and ultimately what it displays as well is is once you've kind of inputted all the numbers so you you put like earliest start date um, uh, late earliest finish time and then latest start date latest finish time and then and once you sort of plug in the numbers of du uh, activity duration um you know it can actually calculate for you the critical path um and, and it kind of tells you where you've got flow and weight and it also says where you on, on another it's, it's a bit of a number cruncher isn't it so i'm probably yeah. displaying it, it's uh, describing it awfully um, no, no. And what I've tried to do in the back, as you're explaining it, what I've done is I've, I've, I've put the slide that corresponds with it. Yeah. Up because I think visually, unless you see it, it's like one of those bad games, isn't it? Where you have to draw something that someone's describing. You just don't know what it looks like. But I think when you see it, everything you're explaining with the start and finish dates. But it, it is almost like a mathematical sort of pathway, isn't it, that's created? Yeah. And it, um, it, what, what I think is quite useful about it is it is it. Not only does it say overall float, but it also says float dependent on its concurrent, uh, no, its successor of the activity. Um, uh, good the pros is obviously the, the detail it can provide to you, um, you know, and, it, and it's very, you know, it's as good as the information you put in. Well, I can see the, the, what, what the negatives of it are. It can be extremely complicated on larger projects, and also it can be quite a lot of admin to keep it up to date. Um, so it's, it really sounds like one of the things, the more you put in, if you've got the time, the more you get out. Uh, is anyone sort of familiar with where it's used? Is there, are there any particular, have you come across it been in use? I only used it, I only actually used it briefly at university. Um, right, okay. as, as a, as a, I've never, I, I don't know what its application is in industry, so it'd be interesting to know. <laughs> yeah, that's what I was wondering if anyone had. Thank you, that was a fantastic diagram, uh, diag explanation of something that's really <laughs> quite complex so yeah well done um i've only has... ever seen it in training i've never used it um, <laughs> so it sounds like something that's taught everywhere but never. <laughs> i think it's something that if you put a gantt chart so ms project for instance if you create a gantt chart or create your schedule within project you can then choose different ways of looking at it and okay. one of the ways is a network diagram right. so i think it's yeah. just a different way of looking at the same information yeah. but in a different way and yeah. I think that's probably the same across the majority of these it's just a, how best you um, kind of relate to the data in, in whichever format it's in. Yeah, <clears throat> yeah. no that's that, yeah okay thank you um, yeah that's um, well explained so we've got so far we've covered four and you remember you've got a choice of three here that you need to explain so the next one um, we've got is project methodologies and Claire you're going to talk us through those aren't you? Yep um, or hopefully anyway um, so I kind of took them all each as one but they've got a lot of commonalities so agile is kind of the current favourite of things um, and as you can see here it's essentially a loop um, it's usually used in the IT area because compared it's a relatively new form of project management compared to waterfall which is the old school one um, and it's kind of more use based and you test things you create hypotheses you test them and you replicate it's very fast it's very quick so it's usually done in um two week sprints um and the big emphasis is on communication um it's good in small teams and you can prioritize and work through your backlogs and such um, but it's generally because it's used in software, it's where you don't know the output or the endpoint. You, you've got the problem, but you don't necessarily know what the solution looks like. So you're kind of constantly testing and iterating. Um, it's seen as very efficient because you kind of you make things very quickly and cheaply and discard as you go and you slowly up the quality of them. So how we're applying it currently in our well, we will be applying it in our work is um, looking, doing some user research, building hypotheses, building, you know, really quick prototypes, no code behind them on how to use a service, figuring out which is the best way, and then putting code behind them, and then, you know, committing to real life as well. Um, 
it one of the downsides of it is it's often seen as lacking in structure and documentation so quite a few companies don't like it or didn't like it because they felt it could lead to a lot of scope creep and such you know it could be uncontrolled really whereas actually good agile management and there's tons of different types there's scrap there's scrum there's six sigma lean all of those it the emphasis isn't is actually no you've got the documentation which you need and you constantly go back to the need user needs and the objectives to make sure you're reaching that so um it still involves a lot of project management to kind of pull everything together waterfall is the other one traditional one um and that's better when you know what you've got so it's used in other things i mean i'm likely to be completely wrong but stuff like civil you know building a bridge where you know you've got to have a bridge um you've got the requirement for gathering all at the start and then you go away and do things and then you come back and you test it um it's seen over longer periods so um there's the idea that actually it all goes wrong which is where it comes in it because it goes wrong you get given something you know this isn't what i wanted whereas with a bridge you know what you need and stuff so um it's kind of more useful in that sense it's um yeah it's seen as traditional and not um focused uh like not modern but i think it does have its place it you know agile is seen as more innovative but you can have innovation with waterfall prince 2 is just a commercialized version of waterfall really they have tried to mix it up and do um as a bit of agile as well um it's often seen as having too much documentation and too much governance which can slow things down but again it's like agile when it's done well the whole idea about prince 2 is that it's scalable so the doc they give you all these products but you choose the best ones both aspects they're all about communication if the communication is good and if the governance is strong no matter how you're doing it it will work well and it will get buy-in they do agile is more suited to it and that sort of thing and user user experience based stuff but it's still they're still both valid and they still both work we're um interestingly going to be doing a mix of agile and waterfall in our oh. next stage project which is going to be such fun and i think it agile is quite hard to change your mind to especially if so our trouble is Highways England governance is quite traditional and waterfall based um, and heavy on the contract. So you've got to have that strict governance in place and the authorities in place. Whereas because it's quite IT enabled, it is we're going to be running between the big milestones as agile. And it's about having the right people in place to be able to give authority to the decision making within the agile who can without slowing down any governance because you've got to go to project board and stuff um but we're having it now where we're like yeah we love agile but actually because we're mostly working in waterfall we can't work in agile and you know there's we've only got one stream of work right now with work in agile and it's just horrendous trying to keep up to date with both of them yeah i can imagine with waterfall having a physical end product whereas with agile i think it seems with a sort of service uh, an intangible Mm. you sort of with waterfall you can't keep like messing around not that agile is messing around but you can't it's much harder isn't it the cost of rework once certain things have agreed it's almost like the implications are, are much more significant aren't they with certain types of projects about going back and changing yeah which is why it's seen as um inflexible and high cost and when it goes wrong it goes very badly wrong um yeah. because you get to the end point and then you realise that it's all wrong rather than fixing it on the way. Mm. I think that's the, one of the biggest positives of Agile, that constant continuous mm. cycle. I was just looking, I've got my APM book next to me and they, for their recent, um, they upgraded to their body of knowledge seven last year. And that one of the things in there now is Agile. So APM are trying to bring the Agile work stream into the project manage into their way of doing project management. Whereas I think Prince too has tried to kind of quash the agile and just really stick to the <clears throat> the traditional methods. When I did it, they that wasn't the case. They were starting to bring it in. They hadn't quite figured out how we were bringing it in, but it 
it didn't feel it felt like it was a bit blistered on you know to the side um but they were they'd recognized that agile needed to be taught in some way um because it, it does depend on the project you're doing um okay um has anyone got any questions or comments to add on the different forms Be really interesting how it works when it's sort of blended between the two that's going to be sort of fi finding out you know in your next project um okay thank you Anytime. sorry um okay so next one we've got is the team of four haven't we so we've got um four gentlemen we're all looking at work like uh, breakdown structure how would you want to share your findings who wants to kick it off I don't mind, Henry. OK, yeah, that'd be lovely. Thank you, Henry. Yeah, so I didn't have much time on this because I was on the phone to IT. Yeah, so not my account out. But um, it's basically the first step in developing the schedule. So it kind of gives you all the information you need to give to the planners or to your, your, your agents or engineers or whatever to produce the, the Gantt charts or the programmes. Um, so it, it should outline everything you need to accomplish, like tasks um, in an easy to understand chart that can be read by anyone ideally. Um, it should detail the work to be executed by the project team to accomplish uh, the project objectives. And it can break the project down into phases, deliverables and work packages. Um, it can also be used as a, a good tool for uh, project managers to kind of understand costs, resource and risks that are associated with the project. I guess it's kind of like we've got this project and it's the first or one of the first steps in planning and scheduling the project. OK. Um, brilliant starting point. Um, yeah, good overview. Would anyone like to add anything, build on what we've just heard? Go, I'll go. I'll go. <laughs> Get it over. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think it's, it's it is very similar to a Gantt chart uh, where where essentially you're breaking a project down into manageable chunks, which are easy to understand and manage. Uh, and you can break them down even further. You can, I mean, it looks like you can sort of break them down as far as far as you want to go. So it, it, yeah, it's, it's, it needs very, very similar to a to a Gantt chart. But it's just it's just uh, pictured in a, diff, a different way. It's and you can obviously there, yeah allocate resource and cost to each little box as well. Uh, yeah, I mean, we, we run a sort of lean board, which, which is very similar to this. So you break a delivery of a project down into little chunks and you, you put a post it on the board of where you're at with that project. So you can, anyone can instantly see at what, what, what stage <clears throat> what stage you're up to, what's been completed, what's still left to do. So it, it's yeah, it's a, a little bit like that really. Uh, I think I think it's reading reading about it, it's obviously the the main thing is it, if you've got a daunting task like you know let's say build build an airliner, you wouldn't know where to start, but you build you just break it down into its little components. Uh, you know, so like build the chassis, you know. Put the engines in, put the wings on, put the engines in. It seems uh, just to yeah break a project down into more manageable manageable chunks to make it easier to understand, easier to control, uh, that sort of thing. Yeah, um, yeah, uh, really good. Especially considering it's something you're not used, you know, you've not looked at before. That's a, a really good um, explanation, both of you, how that uh, works. So Daniel and Isaac, have you got any ideas as to um, what scenarios what sort of because uh, one of the things we're looking at here is different contexts in which you'd use these different tools so for the weight work breakdown structure paul just gave us an example with a with an airline where you've got something really complex if you were building a, a plane or you know can you of the two if you got any ideas as to when you think a work breakdown structure would be the appropriate tool to use well i think they're used in the projects that I work on. Um, are they? So what sort of things are, are those then? Well, it's just, I work on a road improvement project. Um, I work in major projects in Highways, England. So 
Um, so yeah. do, you see, do you see them then, these things? Um, I don't, I'm not too involved in this sort of thing, but okay. the, the, they are produced and I, I have seen them in the past. Um, they're also produced when we're working with suppliers and contractors as well yep. um, to break down the work that they're going to do. Um, and then that will feed into the programme, like, um, like was mentioned by Paul. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sort of defines the scope of, 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 of all the work that they will uh, be undertaking. So um, that's how it's sort of managed and that's how the, the, the contract is managed. Absolutely. Anything to add? Um, yeah, echo everything. They discussed about it being either you can do it deliverable based or process based. So you can okay. have it based on whether, okay, so what we're we going to deliver in this project um, with actual deliverables that you can um, track um, track along with you like you can in a Gantt chart. So you've got the percentages there to see how much of the work you plan it so can, you can map it against your planned and actual as you're going along, which is where it becomes most powerful. Or you can do it process based. Um, so there's not an actual um, managed deliverable at the end of it. Do you think visually it's more, because um, when I'm looking at the picture of that, I think it's almost uh, visually easier to understand than a Gantt chart. Or I think, do you think it is for smaller projects like yes. Yeah. But here they've really simplified the construction of a house. So like it, oh, looks, no. <laughs> it looks good there. And it does. Like if that's oh, how, I think if I could that's do as, it. If that's <laughs> so. how um, in depth you want to go, then yeah, it looks good. But then I, I know you can minimise stuff here, but I think something that's in like a more tabulated structure is yeah. a lot easier for a uh, longer, uh, like a more realistic scope of projects. Um, yeah. So maybe it's more suited to the process based stuff that's a bit more simple or maybe yeah, it's suited to the sort of. high level. Yeah, more because it is more accessible, I'd say, than um, a more traditional tabulated structure. Um, yeah. So maybe it'd be good for presenting information from something else into more simplified form to show, OK, here's a breakdown of everything we're doing, but only split over six or, or so um, topics and a few subtopics each. Yeah, yeah, very good. Thank you. That's been um, a, a good, a very, very good overview. Um, so just to sort of wrap task four up, um, we've heard, I mean, really, really good explanations here of each of these. So thank you very much for, for researching those. Do you feel from what we've seen, would you feel comfortable talking about three of those and talking about how they could be used in different contexts? Or is anyone, uh, basically, does anyone need any more help with this? Or do you feel like you, you'd feel fairly confident giving it a go? Did you say we, so we don't actually have to apply it to an a No, you don't song. have to draw anything or anything. You've just got to basically say, like, almost have three subheaders, sort of Gantt chart. So you'd go, um, for each one, you'd have a subheader and say, say, Gantt chart, how would it be used to plan and manage a project? And then actually, then the second paragraph you could do. So if we're talking about almost for each one, um, I'd say two paragraphs, one would be about how it would be used and the second one, where it would be used in terms of which okay. context. I think, I think it's really quite high level, this is. I think this is a bit... <laughs> I say a really easy one if you know what you're talking about but you've almost got that thread running through the ball because I think they're all connected <clears throat> and they're just different ways of visualizing the same information. Yes absolutely and it's sort of almost like what we just heard about depending on the complexity of the project you might use one over another um, and you could sort of almost with this you could choose Gantt chart, milestone chart and network diagram as sort of fairly connected or you might choose some ones that are quite um, just slightly different approaches to compare and contrast, but hopefully because you've got quite a few to choose from, um, I'm hoping that you've sort of got enough um, here that you do feel comfortable with. Um, so Jennifer and Lee, are you all right with it? Uh, yeah, we should be fine. I like the fact we. Yeah, it's like <laughs> the real way, Jennifer. Are you all right? Yeah. <laughs> okay, brilliant. Okay, it's that's right. It though. So. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you do get stuck, as I say, I can always sort of nudge you in the right direction, and uh, I'll happily do so. Thank you. It, 
<laughs> no, it's a pleasure. Um, are you okay if I carry on with the next task then, task four? As we're on a bit of a roll here, is that okay? Um, okay, fantastic. Uh, what I'll do is though, very quickly, I will um, just stop recording, then start recording again. And the reason I do that is just then they're like in nice, discreet tasks when.